there's so very much to be thankful for, as you well know. Starting with life itself, in fact. Why, just being born is a friggin' miracle whenever you consider the odds of your particular bundle of DNA ever emerging from the roiling Gaian ferment and the infinite reaches of space. Welcome, fellow travelers, to another episode of The Plant Healer's Path. If you happen to enjoy or benefit from these, kindly share the links with your friends on social, smash that like button, and leave a comment to me below. Thank you. Now, people use the expression, grateful to be alive, any time they survive some mishap that could easily have killed them. But given the preponderance of accidents and illnesses in the world, we can actually be thankful each and every day that we somehow manage to wake up, wake up conscious of wonder and sensation, capable of response. Whatever bodily suffering and emotional trauma that we might bear, we can start out being thankful that it's not worse. Thankful for the lessons and the challenges. Thankful for, the, for all that we can benefit by when we're distressed, when we're stressed, when we're challenged. And of course, thankful for the many blessings that inevitably exist right alongside all these troubles and setbacks in life. Achingly not having enough income to cover our various needs can make us even more grateful, in fact. Grateful for the ways in which we're nonetheless rich. Rich with friends. Rich with purpose. Rich with daily creature pleasures. In fact, we're surrounded by so many damn blessings and benefits that we might begin to think that we're owed them or are entitled to them somehow, and then manage to slip into taking them for granted. I'm talking about things like the food that we're so fortunate to eat. Things like the help and the hugs of a loving friend or partner. Like the music at the punch of a button with no delay, and the feel of the sun on our face on a cold winter's day. We're the recipients, the recipients of innumerable gifts, whether we happen to notice and acknowledge them or not. But it's our attentions and our gratitude that make us truly worthy of them. Let's take plants as just one example. Plants literally provide the oxygen that we need to breathe. For much of human existence, it was burning plants, burning wood, that kept us warm. Plants are an important element in a healthy diet, and, and any meat that we ever eat began as plants upon which those animals grazed. Plants have long gifted us with the finest materials for the clothes that we wear. The forests offer up not only shade and shelter, but also places of mystery and opportunities for our restoration, reflection, and revelation. And for the plant healers, I mean from the most ancient wise women and the medicine women and the medicine men of today, to all the practicing herbalists, clinicians, and, and natural healers, plants are the primary source of the medicines that are most likely to save and improve our lives. For that reason, herbs are never something that we're likely to undervalue. But both the quality of our healing practice and the quality of our lived existence tends to increase with a daily ritual of recognizing, honoring, and praising these incredible green beings. We can do this in many ways, many a number of ways, including opening up to our childlike feelings of wonder and amazement every single time that we lay our eyes on, engage with, or handle any plant or plant parts. Before pulling an herb from the soil or out of a bag, we can take a few minutes to just sit with it first, to quiet ourselves and become receptive to what it shows, tells, and means. Plants are never just lifeless components with chemical actions. 
So give them the consideration that you would any living entity and never put them to use mindlessly or automatically. Seek out and find new details, new details, aspects of, and uses for even those herbs that you've already known and used for years. When making an or administering an herbal preparation, such as a tincture or an ointment, pay attention to its taste and its sense. Notice or ask your client about its immediate impressions or effects. Picture the whole plant or plants that went into it. Give a nod to its beauty and a nod to its the garden or the habitat that grew it. Recall or imagine its symbolic powers too, its mythology, its still evolving story and song. Study. Study the historical elements and the diverse folklore of the plants that you work with and work, work them into your own personal evolving tale. Dress up your house with plant parts and with plant art. You don't have to be an animist to honor their numinous spirits as well as their shapes, their smells, their colors, their applications. Don't be too self-conscious about the excited giddiness or that occasional loving tear in your eyes. Don't try to put a lid on what can be overwhelming feelings of connection as well as gratitude that is swelling up in your heart. Vocalize that gratitude even if somebody's watching you, and even if you don't believe that the plants can hear you. It gives weight and witness to the power of your sincere thankfulness if you speak it aloud. Ritualize your moments with the plants in whatever ways feel real and right to you. Preparing a special place for working with them. Setting your intentions beforehand. Repeating a personal, reverent line each time. As important as these steps are, we do well to take it even a step further whenever possible. Feeling, expression, and ritual are ideally followed by substantial real-world actions. Proactive, manifest, sometimes hands-on efforts to not just recognize and praise the gifts of the plants, but to actually give something in return. You know what each herb can do for you, so give it some thought. What are you able and willing to do for them? Let me give you just a few ideas to set those wheels in motion. First off, work with local, proliferate, or weedy species whenever it's possible, and avoid purchasing any plants whose populations are known to be threatened or declining. Grow some of your herbs, especially the most rare and endangered of them, even if it has to be in pots right there on your windowsill. Practice some gorilla gardening, giving yourself permission, permission to sow seeds in public places, in empty urban lots and on highway meridians, both in your travels and in your walks. Adopt a favorite park or an open space. Inventory its species. Reintroduce or help spread the native plants that are there. Do your best to protect it from damage and take a stand if developers ever try to cover it up in concrete. If possible, do the same for wildlands in the region Take a stance regarding its use. Become an advocate or an activist. If you can, join together with others to purchase property and dedicate part of it for plant and animal habitat. Consider placing legally binding land use covenants on it, or even register it like we did here at Anima as a nonprofit sanctuary that can never be broken up or despoiled. Whether you buy your own land or not, join and become active in plant conservation confederations, such as the Admirable Plant Savers. Give a weekend, give a weekend every month, in fact, 
to habitat restoration work or planting seeds, volunteer for environmental projects you hear about, help with cleanups, protest any destruction, and teach others about herbs. Teach them about their needs as well as their uses. Teach at workshops in your town's apothecary. Teach in articles for local publications. In your conversations with friends over cups of tea, and even when standing in line at a Whole Foods market. If you happen to be a musician, compose songs that celebrate their loveliness, that celebrate the plant's curative powers. If you ever write a novel, include the plants as a significant character, as an elef- element and a significator. If you're an artist, somehow work them into your compositions and your carvings. If you're religious or have a spiritual practice, include them in your prayers, include them in your circles. The entire world, and likely the entire universe, functions not just as a system, but as a dynamic loop, a loop of both substance and energy that we call the gifting cycle. The food chain is only one example. The food chain is an exchange that involves not only predators and prey, but soil and nutrients, with all things not only consuming and taking into themselves, but also giving and serving. And even in death, we return something to the earth from which the plants and thus all of creation arise. Similarly, What we ourselves give to the plants, every caring effort and kindly gesture reemerges in the cycle as the bodily and spiritual nourishment that we require reemerges as the medicines that we employ to help others. In this process of regularly demonstrating gratitude, more of the herbs, gifts, and insights are going to be revealed to us, and thus our remedies will become even more tailored and effective, with outcomes even more improved. And just as importantly, our grateful sentiments and acts of appreciation make everything that we do feel more personal, more meaningful, more magical, more of a gift, and therefore more fulfilling. So give thanks. Give thanks by giving to the plants all that you can, and then be conscious of, receptive to, and put to the best possible purposes all that these plants give to you. Venture and savor.